Hello, my name is Jerry Guigno and I'm a board member of Dress for Success Atlanta. Each month during Women's History Month, we are highlighting a remarkable woman in Atlanta who has a, had a significant impact on the lives of other women. Today, I have the distinct privilege to speak with Hala Modelmog, the president and CEO of the Woodruff Art Center. Hala has spent 25 years in president and CEO roles and has served as a corporate director for four New York Stock Exchange companies. Hala, welcome and congratulations for being recognized as a woman in power. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jerry. That's a very kind uh, welcome and I'm really happy to be here. So Hala, you have had a remarkable career in the not-for-profit, for-profit and civic organizations. What has been the inspiration for your professional journey? Well, you know, it's that probably my answer to that has changed a little bit over the years. As I've gotten a little bit older, I really kind of go back just to my mother and father. And I know that's a little bit cliche, but I think the reason I go back there is because I got different things from each parent. Uh, my mother had total unconditional love. And I think when you grow up in a home with the unconditional love, it's 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 pretty hard not to think you can do anything. And then my father had very, very high expectations of all of his children. He really, and his biggest expectation is that you would be a good person and that you would do your very best and work hard in everything you did. So just having kind of that background and though they've both been gone for a long time, um, you just can't help but always have that sort of incentive and inspiration sort of in your body and soul. Well, that's terrific. That's terrific to have such inspiration from your parents. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Woodruff Art Center. It is a fantastic place. You know, I'm personally a patron of the Hyde Museum and I love going there with my family. What are some of the things that you're focused on at the Woodruff Art Center right now? Well, a couple of things uh, for sure, but the way I usually start this answer is that, you know, I think almost everybody in town knows about the just art expertise and the, you know, art excellence that we have. You mentioned the High Museum, of course. We have the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. They've won 28 Grammys. You have the Alliance Theater, and they have won a Tony Regional Award and sent 10 plays to Broadway. So they're all fabulous in the art that they have. And again, I think Atlanta pretty much knows that. But one of the things that we're emphasizing, and again, I give all the credit to the, the art partners here, is really our educational programs, especially for the underserved kids, uh, not only in the Atlanta market, but really across the state of Georgia. So all three of the groups have remarkable education programs. And then we also are focusing on just pure access because not everybody has the opportunity that maybe you and I would have to take our children and to be engaged. So we have a lot of our corporate sponsors that love to um, share and sponsor and just give tickets to hundreds of thousands of kids over the course of, um, you know, of a season. And that's just a, a wonderful, wonderful gift to us that we can share. That's terrific. That's awesome. Um, so you've been a trailblazer, right? You've been the first woman to serve in some of your roles. For example, you were the first female president of the Metropolitan Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. So has being the first woman impacted your perspective in terms of empowering other women or underrepresented individuals? You know, there's really no doubt that it that it has. I mean, I, I again, kind of back to my, my mother and father, I could not... Um, be comfortable today if I didn't have a lot of heart and passion for moving women ahead and frankly, especially women of color, because I know that there's still not a level playing field there. And one of the things that I'm very passionate about is getting more women and again, especially women and really people of color on these corporate boards. Uh, I know that's been a big push the last couple of years, but it's something that I've had a passion for for quite a long time. And I've had the fortune to become involved with some boutique firms who really specialize in this. And, you know, if you've got a talented uh, woman, let's see her on a public board because everything kind of starts at the top. So, yeah, I, this is something I love to do. That is terrific. And it is so important, right, to have that representation because it brings in different views and different perspectives. And it really makes companies better when you have all those different views and perspectives. So that's terrific. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt. And there's all sorts of data to prove it. I used to always go around with my little data sheet, but now everybody pretty much, they've, they've read the data. Sometimes it doesn't change their minds, uh, but the data is there that if you have a more diverse board, and to your point, you have the different views, and then the representation too, that's important to young women and children to see that women um, can be on the largest boards, you know, of any company. And um, plus, it's it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's, it's it's a good gig if you can get it. That's terrific. So and you've spoken about your, your parents. Is there anyone else who's had a significant impact in how you show up today? You know, I think the person that I always need to mention is Frank Bellotti. And Frank was the president and CEO, or CEO and chair, I guess, of um, AFC, America's Favorite Chicken at the time. And we owned churches and Popeyes. And he is the one who gave me the opportunity for my first uh, president's role. Uh, way back in 1997, I was in my late 30s. And it was just the opportunity of a lifetime. And, you know, somebody has to give you that first that first try. And really, I haven't looked back since. So um, it's, it's only right that I mentioned him and just mentioned the um, what what relationships mean. And I think that probably goes without saying, but just. I think women need to be out there, you know, building their relationships and making sure within their companies that they have good, strong relationships because it matters when it's time to make a move. Yeah, that's terrific. Relationships are critically important. That, and that's terrific that you had someone who gave you an opportunity and now you're giving other women and other individuals opportunities. So Haley, it's really been a pleasure to speak with you today and congratulations again on your recognition. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm very happy that the uh, Dress for Success women are being very uh, effective. So thank you. Thank you. If you would like to find out more about Dress for Success Atlanta, please visit us at our website at atlanta.dressforsuccess.org. And be sure to tune in tomorrow as we highlight another remarkable woman during Women's History Month.